Welcome back to another episode. I am your host, Jessica Stroud. And today, okay, I know I say that all the guests are incredible, but today's guest is really incredible. She's my own personal friend, Barbara Shrehans. And the reason why I have invited Barbara on She is a perfect example of a woman that has taken something traditional like accounting and she has made it exciting and she has made it fun and she has made it interesting. And I'm excited for you to meet her, Barbara. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Here's what I need. Everybody can go and read your bio, right? They can Google and you Google you and do all that. I want to talk about how you be how you decided to even become an accountant because I you are one of the very few accountants that I know that are exciting so how did you (laughs) even you know what I'm saying how did you even go through that like okay I'm gonna be an accountant how did that even happen right I, I always joke with people they're like they ask me the same question and I'm like well if anyone tells you they grew up wanting to be an accountant, they're lying. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) But no, honestly, what happened, I got pregnant in college and I went to my career counselor and I was like, what is it that 100% chance the day I graduate, I'm going to have a job because I'm about to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And they said accounting. And I was already in business. My major was business, but we had to concentrate in something. And one of the concentrations was accounting, but at the time mine was like entrepreneurship. And so when they said accounting, I was like, did a little piece of you die? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I changed my concentration to accounting and then I kind of fell in love with it in accounting. You could either go like the audit route or the tax route. And I just loved taxes. Cause I liked the mystery of it and like figuring out, uh, all the puzzle pieces. And so then I went on to even get my master's in taxation, which is so okay, nerdy wait. to say. <laughs> what? You are one of the most fun and energizing women that I know. And you have a master's in taxation. I know how nerdy. That's all right. That's all right. (laughs) So you graduate from college and you got this degree in accounting and you've Mm -hmm. decided that you're not going to go and work for one of the big companies where you go into corporations and basically audit them. Is that right? Well, so I still went into big four. It's called big four accounting. So one of the top, I was at the top accounting firm in the world, but I did tax there. So you could either do tax or audit there. Okay. So you said, I'm going to help well, if it was one of the big four, you were going to help corporations file their taxes. Yeah. Apple okay, and Google were my clients. So that doesn't sound exciting at all. It, uh, yeah, it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> so then how long did you stay there? Not very long. Okay. Uh, my manager there quit. So big four has like huge turnover because right. they just like work you to the bone, literally hundred hour weeks. They have sleeping pods on their floors because people work there so long. Wow. Um, and they just don't pay you very much either for, especially for the amount of hours that you're working. It's really just like an ego thing to say like, oh, I worked at big four and blah, blah, blah. So my manager had left and he poached me to the firm that he went to. And so then I worked at a regional firm. I worked at smaller firms. And they were all kind of the same. Like they didn't actually help their clients as much as I wanted to find that. I was like, well, maybe in a smaller company, they'll actually save their, maybe in a smaller company, they'll actually save their clients. And like, I just wasn't finding it. So you went from literally one of the biggest companies in the tax companies in the accountant firms in the United States, you kept going smaller and smaller and smaller looking for someone who was can we say a tax consultant? Yeah. I just wanted them to like help people more, not just file these boring ass forms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, because when I met you and you're like, Oh, I'm an accountant. I'm like, mm, no, no, you're not. Because it, unfortunately I think we think of accountants as order takers. Mm. Like you said, here's the paperwork, you file the paperwork and, and then, okay. But you have your own company, which is 100% incredible, but it, you still file everything like you're supposed to, 
but you are very much, you and your team are very much tax consultants and not just order takers filling out the paperwork. So, so then at what point did you decide to start your own thing? Yeah. So the last firm that I worked at, we were moving. So my husband's still active military. So we moved around every couple of years. So I had to switch firms every couple of years and I was kind of getting sick of that anyway, but I still never thought of like opening my own business. I think it's so ingrained in us, especially in college of like, this is the corporate ladder. And like, you're going to be a staff accountant, then a senior accountant, then a manager, then a director. And maybe one day you'll be one of the hundred people that become a partner. And it was just like, so stuck in my head. I never even thought of opening my own business, but we were moving from North Carolina to Arizona at the time. And I, I was doing tax strategy at my last firm and the client I was working on, I saved them over a million dollars in taxes. And So that, that firm got the largest check they'd ever received in their 60 year history. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to like get a bonus, right. For my good efforts and saving money and, you know, and I got a hundred dollar Christmas bonus. And so I was like crying to my husband and he was like, well, if they were your client, how much would they have paid you? And I was like, well, shit. I guess they would have paid me the same. And he's like, why don't you start your own firm? And like the light bulb moment of like, I should have thought about this years ago, but I just didn't. Husbands ask some difficult questions sometimes, don't they? (laughs) But also like, (laughs) duh. (laughs) So then you moved to Arizona and you're like, all right, here we go. Yeah. And how long ago was that? At the time I was still afraid to like cut the tie of corporate and you know, it's just scary going from a salary to zero. And so I did stay on with them for a little bit. I was their first employee that they hired remotely. They had never, you know, it's very old school. Like, you know, it's the typical stuffy old accountant, um, male dominated company. Yeah. And so tried to make it work for a few months, but my company just like took off. Um, we, we started January of 2020. So COVID happened two months later and that was also like, well, crap, what does this mean for my business? But luckily COVID really expanded our business because business owners really needed a lot of help during COVID and I could offer that. So luckily the business took off and I quit. So that's interesting because most people think of their accountants as someone that you go in and you sit down and you talk to and COVID changed all of that. You didn't go in and sit down and talk to anyone anymore. Yeah. And it was great because my firm is all remote. So it was almost like it pushed everyone to be on zoom anyway. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you weren't stuck behind the, oh, I can only help people in this state do certain things Yeah, or in the city even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then tell me who are your favorite clients to work with? Ooh, Mm -hmm. established business owners that have been paying a lot of money in taxes already. And so when they come to us, we can amend the last three years tax returns and get them back tens of thousands of dollars. So that already like far outweighs our fee. Right. And they love us because they get so much money back. And then obviously we can help them moving forward too, but, but yeah, just like already established business owners that want to pay less money in taxes. (laughs) So then how do you how do you get most of your clients? Social media. Mm. I think that was also really different for us is like so many accounting firms don't use social media. And so we kind of like luckily took over the marketplace for that. And who knew people would search Instagram for their accountant? (laughs) Well, if we, the world has changed, right? So I'm, you're in your thirties. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking you're a little bit younger. So you're in your thirties. I'm in my forties. And even some of the ones that are in their fifties, they don't, you know, I always think of an accountant's office. It's, it's dark. I don't want to say dingy, but there's lots of paper. There's lots of old books. There's lots of printers. There's lots of, there's lots of things that I don't necessarily like in accountant's (laughs) offices. And so I feel like that's exactly right. So I feel like the, the 
entrepreneurs, which is funny because you started your degree go like with an entrepreneurial mindset. You were studying how to be an entrepreneur. Weird. And then I got brainwashed <laughs> into being an accountant. Yeah, no, I hear you. We get, we get sidestepped sometimes, but look how amazing it's turned out. Yeah. So you, so people can just come to you and, and all of the States or just some of the States. Yep. All 50 States. Okay. So people can just come to you and kind of, uh, vomit their stuff all over you mm-hmm. and you will go through and look at all of their stuff and help them. But you also said that you like puzzles, right? Mm-hmm. And so there aren't many accountants that I know that will offer to go back and audit the last couple of years. They just say, oh, well, let's just handle your payroll. Let's just do that. And they want to move forward. Mm-hmm. So is it your love of puzzles that has you wanting to look through people's last three years of their taxes? Maybe, but I think that it's more of, I just want to have, I just want people to have more money, right. Mm -hmm. And the money that they deserve. And so many times I see tax returns where it's like, if this accountant just told them X, Y, Z, they would have saved $20,000 and like over three years, that's 60 grand. Like that's life changing, you know? Yeah. There's a lot you can do with that. And around here, we talk a lot about making our own rules and living by our own rules. And one of the reasons why I asked Barbara to be on here is because as a woman, as a business owner, as a wife, as a mom, she makes her own rules. And of course, in accounting, there's tax laws that she is very careful to follow but you create your own rules around all of that. So what are without, now listen, Barbara's not on here to give you tax advice. So we're not going to get into that, (laughs) but what are some of the, and keep it high level for me because most of us don't understand, but what are some of the typical issues that you see for entrepreneurs? Like old school yeah. rules that they follow and you're like, that's changed. That's not the same anymore. But that's mm. you that doesn't mean what you think it means. What are some things that you see where you're like, that doesn't actually mean what you think it means? Yeah, so many. So I still hear people say that, like, oh, if I claim a home office deduction, that's a red flag. And it's like, well, that was a red flag in like 2000 when nobody had a computer in their house and nobody was working from home, but literally like 99% of us work at home and you should be getting like a five to $10,000 deduction on your tax return for working from home. And if you don't have that much of a deduction, you need to find a different accountant that will actually calculate it for you. That's perfect. That's one of the, that is something that if, if I could have that was a perfect answer that I was looking for. Mm. What, what else have you seen change a little bit with, because with COVID so many people, they are working from home. Even if they're corporate employees, they're working from home. They have their own businesses. They have side incomes. They have multiple incomes, What are the other, maybe some of high level deductions that you think people are scared to take, but that you, that you see, or no, these are legitimate things here. Yeah. I would say travel expenses. A lot of people are afraid to deduct their travel expenses or even like mastermind expenses. I still see clients coming to us where they're like, yeah, my old accountant said I couldn't deduct this mastermind or this retreat or this. And it's like, well, did it help you in your business at all? Can this expand your mind and your thinking and, and your vision so that you actually make more money? Mm-hmm. Cause that helps the IRS when you make more money. Right. So of course that could be a business expense and travel. Like people think only if you drive to a client meeting or something, can you deduct travel? Well, it's like, did you go to this place and have a photo shoot? because you needed to travel there 
to have the photo shoot and the photos go on social media and that's a business expense, you know, that's marketing. So I think it's just expanding like the typical thought of, oh, it can only be if I'm, you know, face to face with a client and only if we order chicken and rice, cause it can't be luxurious or, you know, expensive or anything like that. So we really just work with our clients and see their lifestyle and be like, okay, how can we change this to a business expense? I always say like, change your facts to change your tax. And so it's really just kind of digging in and then we keep finding more stuff. Okay. So here is one of the things that I'm catching that I absolutely love. You aren't just trying to save people money. You're, you're educating them and helping them because look, we all want to pay taxes. We're not trying to not pay taxes, right? Barbara and I, we're happy to pay taxes, right? Because keeps the governments running, keeps the United States going, whatever. We're not trying to not pay taxes. We are just trying to make make sure that we only pay our fair share of taxes. We're not looking to overpay on our taxes. And that's where Mm -hmm. Barbara really helps. But what I, what I love so much is with your clients, you're not just saying, okay, here's, here's the different tax things. You're actually helping them grow as business owners and entrepreneurs. You're, you're kind of shaking up their thinking a little in a, in a very positive way. Yeah. Coaching them. Your tax coach. Your tax coach. Yeah. And so (laughs) that's the, that's the, um, you'll see it in the show notes, of course, but that's Barbara's. Okay. Listen, if nothing else, if you get nothing else out of this podcast today, go to Instagram and follow Barbara at your tax coach, right? She's at mm-hmm. your tax coach and just follow her because you will, Barbara isn't just an accountant. She's a personality, right? Oh. Just what I'm serious. You have such a big, beautiful personality and you're not this stuffy uh, office, dark office, you do fun videos and you do reels and you do so many tips. Like you give away a ton of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try. So how do you, let's talk about, do you work from home most of the time? Yeah. Okay. How do you balance? Okay. I know balance is for ballerinas, but I'm not real sure how else to say it. Cause you got a husband that's active in the military, right? God bless them. You've got how many, you got like six kids. No, three. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, no, no. I was thinking three, but I was like, I'm just going to say more than three. You've got three kids that are running around all the time and you're still, you're still striving for more. You're still striving for how do I continue to grow myself and evolve myself so I can evolve my business? Where does that come from? I live and die by my calendar. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really important and having boundaries with clients as well, because so many times like they can call me, like I had phone calls at five something in the morning. I mean, granted they're my East coast clients. So right, it's right. like eight something their time. Um, But just having the boundaries of like, I will respond to you nine to five before that. And after that is family time. And if I need to work late, it's after the kids go to bed and then also scheduling in vacations. Like we just spent three weeks in Hawaii and it's being able to delegate to the team, but also, you know, I would work like four hours early morning before the kids woke up. So then by the time it was family time during the day, we could go out to the beach and have fun, but I still got done what I needed to get done. And I still had client meetings and all of that. But I think it's just this constant, like, you know, you have to schedule it on your calendar and live and die by those rules. And if the gym's on my calendar at five o'clock, like I'm logging off and I'm going to the gym and yeah. Yeah but it's taken a while. It wasn't always this nice balance. Yeah. So what I loved about that so much is you're not saying, oh, you just shut it all off. You just shut it down, shut down the computer, shut down the phone. You just ignore everybody, ignore everything. Because what I know personally is when you do commit those just few hours in the morning, when the kids are still sleeping or before it's time for family time, then you are 100% in it for the rest of the day. 
or for however long you're going out to do the Hawaii things. You're not beating yourself up or thinking about, oh, I got to get this done or I, oh, I got to get that done because you are, <clears throat> like Barbara said, she's really good with her schedule, which means she's really good with compartmentalizing, right? So many, so many entrepreneurs, and this must be the accountant coming out in you, but so many entrepreneurs are terrible with compartmentalizing. They're always thinking about their business. They can't shut it off. Whereas because Barbara has become so dedicated to, I'm just going to be real. Barbara's dedicated to being all the things. She wants to be a great wife. She wants to be a great mom. She wants to, she likes to lift heavy things. Okay. Can we talk about that? You lift heavy things. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Okay. I like to lift heavy things. Okay. But there's a record. (laughs) No, come on. You got to tell the story. You lift, tell, tell there's a, there's a record or something. Oh, yes. So I do Olympic weightlifting, which is just snatch and clean and jerk. If you know those two movements and okay. Assume we don't. Okay. So a snatch is like bringing a barbell from the floor overhead. Oh my goodness. Long story short. And then a clean and jerk is like bringing it to your shoulders and then jerking it over your head. Oh, um, and I used to compete. I haven't since I had my youngest, he's now four, but my last competition, I did win gold. So that was cool. So I'm pretty strong and I'm going to compete again. Masters starts at 35. So I'm training right now for 35 and older. I'm 33. So I have like a little over two years and I'll try for masters, but I don't want to compete with all the youngins. So I'll just keep getting strong and be okay. Wait, people. so you're going to give yourself a two year runway so that you can bust in at 35 and knock them all out. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's why I bring that up. There's so many sides to you and not multiple personalities because that's kind of like a, a, a clinically diagnosed disorder, <laughs> but there are multiple multiple things that you do. You have multiple identities, right? You're a business owner, which you're a tax coach. We're going to put that in the business owner. You're a wife, you're a mom, you're a heavy lifting person that has won titles, like professional titles for doing that. And most people think of accountants as born. And you're nothing but boring. Yeah. Are you still, are you still hosting your women's events? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not only do you help people with their taxes, but you, you have a love of helping build up women in general. Yeah. Anything with women and money. Mm. So money mindset, building Mm -hmm. wealth, generational wealth, just like, because I grew up around so many women that depended on men, I was Mm. like, why is that? Like, it doesn't need to be like that. And so that's why I just love uplifting women business owners. How often do you do that? I mean, the events right now, they're twice a year, they're big retreats. Um, and so they're usually like in May and October, November. Mm. And you like to go to warm places. I mean, it's always warm in Arizona, but still we, we kind of switch off. Mm-hmm. like a warm place and a cold place. Cause there's also like, we do fun excursions and things like that. So kind of mix it up. Mm-hmm. What was the last one you did? The last one, Sedona. Mm-hmm. And then Cabo is teeing up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I'm actually going to Cabo twice this year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. To, yeah. We've got less than six months left in the year and I've already got two, two trips on there. Awesome. So if somebody comes to your retreats, can they count them as business expenses? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cause we're talking, right. we're talking tax strategy. We're talking financial literacy. We're talking retirement plans and exiting your business and building your dream life and what that actually costs. People think that their dream life costs this exorbitant amount, but we actually create a budget for that. And mm-hmm. more people than not realize like, damn, I could be living my dream life right now 
I'm just not doing it correctly. So you're helping women write their own rules when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're helping them write some rules for the next generation with their money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And breaking (laughs) and probably breaking all the rules that their parents taught them. That's exactly right. It's a, it's a different world. And I, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, when we were kids or whatever, it's just, it's just different. It's not worse. It's not better. It's just different. And the way that we grew up and the things that our parents did are not the things that we have to do or that we necessarily should be passing on to our children. Mm -hmm. And so Barbara is helping them break the cycle of this is how we do money into how do you want to do money? She's not saying, here's how you should do money. She's saying, let's talk about how do you do money? Mm -hmm. So if they follow you on Instagram, is that, where do you, where do you announce your retreats? So really they've been selling out without us having to like launch anything. Okay. Um, and so our clients get first dibs, of our, course. Our, our tax clients, but then we'll put it on Instagram for sure. Okay. So Instagram's the best place to follow us. Cause that's where we're putting all of our tax tips and tricks and all of our services and announcements and things. So while there are a few gentlemen that listen to this podcast, Hey fellas, mostly it's women. Mm-hmm. So if they're listening to the podcast and they're going, okay, well, I mean, my accountant's doing okay, but I really like how Barbara talks about money and teaches me about money. She's not just filing paperwork. She gives me resources to help me grow my business. She actually is an example on social media about how I should be using social media to grow my business, right? So you follow her for that too. (laughs) How do they, like most they've been with their accountants for so long or by default or whatever, how do they even begin to maybe try to start a relationship with you? Yeah. Gosh, it sounds daunting, but it's it does, so right? easy. It's so easy. I even yeah. have a template breakup message to their accountant. Oh, nice. <laughs> because nobody so likes people, to break up. Yeah. Cause so many people say like, they're afraid to break up with their accountant. So I have a template. It's a very nice message. Like, thank you so much for all of your support for the last few years, blah, blah, blah. Um, but really we just need their old tax returns and a few forms and we can get started from there. So usually what happens, someone like just DMs me on Instagram and they're like, Hey, let's chat about, you know, if you can save us money in taxes, I send them our link, they put their name in and they can get on my schedule or my team schedule. And then, yeah, we just get tax returns from them and we can get going. It's really not that hard, but people think that it is. Yeah. Okay. So here's what you can do. Listen, for Barbara and I, it's not weird when you slide into our DMs. You might think it's weird, but it's not weird for us. That's how we grow our business. So just look her up on Instagram, send her a quick message. Hey, Barbara, I need help with my taxes. That's all you gotta say. I need help with my taxes. Now, uh, I love the whole breakup letter because in our insurance agency, that's what we have. We're like, nope, we will break up with your <laughs> old insurance agent for you. We'll help you get your policies canceled. We'll send the breakup. Cause I would always joke, like nobody likes to break up. So we will help you. We will help <laughs> you break up with that. But all you have to do is reach out to her and say, I need help with my taxes. Now, Barbara performs at such a high level because she has a team. So don't get all worried about, oh, I'm, I, oh, I'm going to talk with one of Barbara's team, her on her team. She oversees everyone, but just like in my company, we have teams that help us because we have trained them to do things that we do. And they have different levels of brilliance on different things than we do. So you can send Barbara your information and she will get you started wherever you need to go. I love that. And I love that you mentioned about the team because some people do get kind of spun up about that. Like, oh, I thought I was meeting with just you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, wouldn't you want me to have a team of experts that are available to you at any time, you know? And honestly, I hire people that are better at it than even me. I'm just maybe better at talking about it. So 
So in, yeah, thanks for in our, in our agency, I just tell people, you, you don't want me looking at your policy. Cause I don't know what I'm looking at. Right. We have like 14 different carriers we work with. You don't want me looking at your billing. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the logins to the companies that we work with anymore. I don't even have those because that's not, you do not want me getting stuck in that. Absolutely not. I say, I hire a team of people who are so much better at all of that than I am. Love it. Do you, um, at your retreats, do you ever talk about scaling businesses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are a small business owner or someone who has, um, owns a business and you just have, like, you're still in sales and generating the income, I don't want you to self-select If you think Barbara can help you, she's not going to come back and say you're too small because most people who come to Barbara, they're like, all right, save me some money, right? Reduce my tax burden because I want to grow my business. So if you are in a situation where you think I definitely want to grow my business, you absolutely should reach out to her. Yeah, definitely. That tax savings could pay for your next Mm -hmm. higher salary. Well, and if you're, okay, so again, I know this isn't for everyone, but I'm super curious and we're not going to mention names or anything, but what is, okay. So you said on average, you can save people around $20,000 a year on their taxes. It's way higher, but I just like to keep it lower. It's what? It's way higher, but that's what I was going to (laughs) say. I want to know what's the other than a million dollars. Oh, I guess. Is that the most amount you've ever saved anyone? Uh, no. What's the most amount you've ever saved someone? So between like tax savings and getting checks from the government yes. through, through different credits. Because listen, Barbara doesn't just help you file your taxes. She uncovers things that you didn't even know exist, not to just save money, but to get money back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Four million. Four million dollars. Do you know what I can do with four million dollars? Right. But but let's just talk about what if it wasn't four million? What if it was 20? Right. And Barbara said she went, she goes, she's willing to go back. Her and her team are willing to go back through the last three years. And if there's 20 a year, sixty thousand dollars is it's a down payment on investment property right? Mm -hmm. It's a down payment on a commercial building. It's a down pay. Well, Barbara and I have several friends that help us invest in different, um, uh, different funds and different things. It's money that you can in, I like to say future John and Jess for my husband and I, it's money that you could invest for your future self, for your children, right? Mm -hmm. We have to get away from this stigma of, oh, I feel guilty if I don't pay my taxes. Well, you should feel guilty for overpaying and not investing that money for your future self and for your children. 100%. Yeah. This, it's right. literally money that is yours. You just happened to overpay, mm-hmm. right? And Barbara's going to save you. Yeah. And- I love, I love talking about my quote unquote, smaller clients way more like on social media. You won't really see me talking about the clients that I save millions of dollars because for a lot of people, it's not relatable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the people where I can save them $10,000 and that $10,000 can catch them up on their mortgage payments or can make the next payroll. Like those are the clients that we honestly love even more, right? Because if someone's getting back $4 million, they are completely fine, right? Absolutely. <laughs> they had the money to pay in to begin with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like you were saying, don't count yourself out. Like come to us, even if you think you're a quote unquote small business, because again, if we can get you a few thousand dollars back, it will dramatically help. Absolutely. Like like what you're saying about commercial building yesterday, someone in apex, he just got a bunch of checks back from the government because of Mm us. And I was like, what are you going to do with all that? And he's like, it's going to be a down payment on our commercial property. And I'm like, that's amazing. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely. So, and the reason why, uh, Barbara brings that up is because we, 
and <laughs> funny, she talked about masterminds and all that are excellent tax write-offs um, because that's how we meet people and that's how we grow and that's how we expand is Barbara and I are in the same, one of the same um, high-level masterminds together. And that's how we met. And I know people are thinking, well, how do you meet all these great people? Well, it's through high-level masterminds. And now, or how do you find out about these investment opportunities? Where do you put your money? And now Barbara is telling you that when you invest in yourself and you invest in your business, she can help you make sure that you get all of the tax savings that you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you take that money and you grow it, the government likes that because then let's think about it like this. Let's say Barbara gets you 60 K back and you're like, great, I'm going to hire um, another employer, I'm going to expand my business. Well, the government likes that because now you're paying someone a salary, right? We've got three salaries that come out of our office every single month and they're paying employment taxes and I'm paying employment taxes on the money, right? Yep. And then they're spending the money and they're paying taxes on that too. The government likes it. So yep. Change your mindset about, oh, I have to pay taxes. It's my right. I've got, you know, I have to. No, start seeing it as let me reduce my tax burden so I can grow my business. And that's a win win for everyone. I love it. And that's how we, that's how we make our own rules around here. (laughs) All right, Barbara, what else you got? Oh, what do you want me to talk about? Oh, no. We're just, I'm just, I'm wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Okay. Okay. So, It's okay to stalk Barbara on the socials. We actually like when people stalk us on the socials, okay? (laughs) Stalk us, connect with us. It's only weird if you make it weird. (laughs) (laughs) We are liberal with that block button, so don't make it weird. And I'm not just saying follow Barbara for the tax stuff. I'm saying that... Barbara is an incredible example of a woman who makes her own rules when it comes to being married, when it comes to being a business owner, when it comes to being a mom, when it comes to being a lifting heavy things, right? And follow her for not just the tax stuff for, for all of the incredible women stuff. So at your tax coach. Yes, ma'am. On Insta. And then you also have a podcast. Yeah. Mm Life-changing money. Oh, nice. And I love how she, the intro to her podcast is we're talking about taboo things. We're talking about money. <laughs> yes. Ooh, thanks for listening. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm, I'm a, I'm a friend with Barbara, but I'm also a stalker too. So that's fine. So everyone, thank you for listening and thank you for going and stalking Barbara and following her and liking all her stuff and listening to her podcast so that you can start to make your own rules. All right. Barbara, say goodbye. Bye. Thanks for listening.